The age of discovery started from the end of the 15th century. Portuguese Prince Henry, the navigator, propelled the first round of maritime exploration, taking full advantage of the geological position of Portugal. During the exploration, new territories and trade routes to both Africa and Asia have been discovered. With almost identical geological advantage, Spain sponsored the exploration to the west, where Christopher Columbo, the Italian navigator, completed the transatlantic voyage, and later the Portuguese navigator Ferdinand Magellan led the first circumnavigation of the globe in 1519. The exploration brought both nations tremendous fortune and a powerful rivalry, England. As there were not many new lands to explore, the English sailors made their fortune out of the fortune of Spanish galleons. The most famous example may be the capture of Cacafuego by Captain Francis Drake in 1578 which made him 36 kilograms of gold, 26 tons of silver, and many others. Spain was of course furious about the raids. In 1588, Spain sent 130 ships called the Spanish Armada to attack England. But the English, with the faster ships and better guns, defeated the Armada. The defeat of Spanish Armada saved England from invasion. It also meant Spain no longer ruled the sea, and it allowed England to gain power. It is noteworthy that in the returning from battle, more Spanish ships were lost in the storms at sea. Fewer than half the Spanish ships ever returned to Spain. About a hundred years later, in 1707, during the War of the Spanish Succession, the English Navy sent a fleet led by the Commander-in-Chief of the British fleets, Sir Cloudsley Chavot, to the Mediterranean. The fleet attacked Toulon and managed to inflict damage on the French fleet. However, during the return to the England, the fleet got lost and entered Isles of City, where four ships struck on rock and sank. Over 1,500 men died. The city naval disaster is one of the worst maritime disasters in the history of the British Isles. The main cause of the catastrophe is the navigator's inability to accurately calculate the position at sea. Nowadays, everyone can look up the positions easily from a GPS device. But back then, people had to find out their coordinates with limited resources. Because the latitude is referenced to the equator or the poles. It can be easily calculated from the angle of the sun to the observer to the horizon in any specific season. However, it is difficult to determine the longitude because the reference is arbitrary. If you imagine a spinning global bar, you will find that the latitudes are stable and the longitude are changing all the time. By convention, the prime meridian, which passes through the Royal Observatory, Greenwich, England, was allocated the position of zero degree longitude. As transoceanic travel grew in significance, so did the importance of reliable navigation. This eventually led to the Longitude Act in 1714, 
which established the board of longitude, and offered twenty thousand pounds, which is about half a billion dollars today, for any solution which could find longitude to within half a degree.